Hello, everyone, and welcome to AWS Heroes in Conversation. Today, we have Dave Stoffecker with us, and uh, he is going to share his journey, overall his career journey, his cloud journey with us. So, Dave, welcome to the channel, and Thank we are looking much. forward to learning from your experience today. <laughs> Thank you very much for having me. Sure, absolutely. So, Dave, why don't we start the conversation with, you know, you telling a little bit about yourself and sharing your career journey with our audience? I sure. think that would be a perfect start. Sure. Um, so I am a chief platform engineer uh, with a company called Direct Supply in Milwaukee. Um, I have been there just over 21 years. Um, started on their help desk back in September of 2001 and quickly moved into helping out the sysadmin team. And that, okay. uh, that got me into the data center and got me all excited about uh, you know, entry level sysadmin stuff like changing the backup tapes and you know stuff like that. Um, quickly found a real passion for storage and backups, and uh, for most of my career, I've been focused on building out storage solutions for direct supply, whether that's in the data center stuff or in cloud stuff. Nice. Uh, we started. I remember we put in the first our first SAN in like 2003, and it was four terabytes it was massive um and and uh by the time we started moving to cloud that had grown to 1.2 petabytes nice so roughly a 30,000 percent growth um during the the on-prem days as i'll call them um so yeah lots of lots of fun and interesting data and and storage and backup challenges to solve um and it was it was a lot of fun. And uh, back in 2016, we had kind of wrapped up an experiment we were doing with some open source on-prem uh, private cloud stuff and decided that the timing was really good for direct supply to start moving out to the public cloud. Sure. Uh, we kind of had like what I refer to as the perfect storm, like a the perfect data center storm. So we had a bunch of storage gear that was up for life cycle. We had a, a disaster recovery facility that had a lease that was up, up for renewal. We had all sorts of servers that, that needed life cycle. And it was, you know, all these different kind of life cycle timelines for each of the different pieces of gear all kind of converged at one point in time. And uh, so we looked at it and said, you know what, now is the best time we will ever have to move away from what we've been doing sure. and pivot into the public cloud. Okay. So nice. that became both a, a strategic enabler for us, you know, building new things and new technologies and, and kind of changing the way we interact with our technology. But it was also a, a really big opportunity to kind of life cycle some aging hardware and and get away from kind of old traditional physical patterns of doing IT. So it seems that was a precursor. So how did you get exactly started on cloud? So <clears throat> uh, we knew in 2016 that public cloud was coming, late 2016. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there, there was a lot of, I was a traditional infrastructure person, right? So- Correct. I had a lot of anxiety about, oh my God, is my job going to exist six months from now, a year from now? What is this cloud thing? It's really, really scary. And software guys seem really excited about it. And okay, why are we doing this? What's the advantage? So I came home and set up a free AWS account one night. And okay. I, I sat down with my laptop at the dining room table and said, okay, I am not getting up from this table until I've got a Windows box running in Amazon that I can RDP into and, and you know, run calculator. That's my goal. It was like eight minutes later, I was done. And I looked at it and was like, okay, we don't have nearly the automation in our on-prem stuff mm -hmm. to make any of the way we've been operating any sort of a a realistic model for us. Like there is nothing I could say with any shred of credibility that would make a good argument for not doing cloud. So it went for me from if I learned the cloud to when I learned the cloud. 
And I figured there was no better opportunity than when direct supply is taking the systems that I'm very familiar with and that I've worked on for the last 15 years and figuring out what the cloud can do to help make those run better, make them run more efficiently, take all of that domain knowledge I already had and apply it to something new. Was that so, transition overall like a painful transition? No. Um, I Once I realized that this was my opportunity and my time to, to kind of evolve, sure. I jumped on it. Um, so we have, uh, with our AWS account team at the time, we had a solutions architect working with us who was fantastic. He had been a data center guy himself. He had mm -hmm. lots of network and storage experience. <clears throat> and I reached out to him and said, hey, we got a lot of people freaked out about what comes next, but you've lived this, you've worked through it, you learned the cloud, and now you are working for the cloud. Would you come talk to our team and kind of just let us bounce questions off of you and help us figure out, like, what does this new way of working look like? What skills do we need to learn? What what resources do we need to have? What does my day-to-day -day become working in the cloud? And uh, so my my leaders said, yeah, take the whole team off site, go someplace fun. He came down or came up, I guess, from Chicago. And, and we spent an afternoon just picking his brain on all things cloud. And some of it was very technical stuff. Some of it was experience stuff. Some of it was about, you know, how much his background applied to what yeah. he was doing now. Um, and it really, like, it really helped the rest of the team understand what was coming next in a way that gave gave them what they needed to really figure out for themselves what they wanted their next career step to be. Nice. So most of the team said, yeah, this cloud stuff looks really cool. Let's, let's jump on it. Um, so if anybody so is starting off their journey right now, let's say whether the person right now is an infrastructure architect assuming that they still exist or is still working physically on a data center and would want to kind of move towards cloud, what would be your advice to those people who are just starting off their journey? Because just like you, they probably are either scared or not willing. I'm sure there's a lot of buzz of cloud around, but not sure. that everybody has the required experience and not that everybody is even as lucky as you were like to have someone from AWS, you know, strong enough to work with you. So what would you be your advice to people who are just starting off their journey? Wow. So I feel like I was really lucky in the way that direct supply approached moving to the cloud. Sure. They gave us a lot of time. They gave us a lot of access to great training resources. And they encouraged us to make mistakes, figure out why things didn't work right, and, and pivot to trying other things. We were, we were encouraged to experiment and and along with the experimentation, figure out when things weren't going to work out and and fail fast, we call it. Um, so I would definitely start with, with a training piece. There's tons of stuff on YouTube. Mm -hmm. There's tons of different online training vendors, you know, that have fantastic streaming platforms. Um, and you can pick that up and work on it in your spare time. Um, I found it was really helpful for me very early on to just to find some basic cloud problems I wanted to solve. Sure. Just for myself, like, okay, I love music. I have a massive music collection and a lot of like live recordings of concerts and stuff. I don't need to store that on, on the NAS in my, my, you know, upstairs closet anymore. Let's move this to S3. So let's figure out what it looks like to launch a file gateway and copy data from my local network out to my S3 bucket sure. in my own personal AWS account. What does that look like? How would that how would that work? Oh, look, that little project set me up for moving all of my multimedia teams data out to the cloud, playing with a Windows server or even getting my kids involved. Like we, um, my kids love playing Minecraft. Sure. They want yeah. Minecraft servers. So great. Let's do this in the cloud. Let's figure out how to launch a Minecraft server and get it up and, and wire up all the networking so they can have all their friends over and play on their own dedicated Minecraft server. <clears throat> lots of great little problems that pushed me to kind of experiment on my own outside of what we were doing for work. Um, nice. so that was a piece of it. Um, certainly having a mentor really, really helped. 
Um, and, and part of working with a mentor is not being afraid to ask questions. Questions, yes. Like, if you think about it, AWS is what, 15 years old, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe 16 now? I can't remember the number. It's under 20 years old, right? Yes. So the cloud is not even old enough to go vote, right? So everybody who is working in cloud, it's not like they've been doing this for a hundred years or, you know, they invented the airplane or invented the wheel, right? Like cloud started with one service and it went from there and people have had to figure out how to take one service and then add a second and a third and a hundredth and a thousandth. We've all been there. You cannot walk into a cloud conference and see somebody who who legitimately just woke up one day and knew all this stuff, right? And That's some true. of us, I feel very fortunate that I've had input into how some of the cloud gets developed and how some of the stuff that Amazon brings to market works and and you know the features that customers can use in those those platforms. But stuff I work on now didn't exist three years ago. The stuff I was working on three years ago didn't exist three no. years before mm-hmm. that. So if there's any intimidation or feeling like, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do. This is so intimidating. Just realize that none of it existed a few years ago. Correct. Everybody's figuring out as they go and finding new ways to do it. And you really just jump in and go. I think you're right. I think you some way you have to be willing to jump in, get your hands dirty and willing to take that risk, the risk to fail. Exactly. Most importantly. Exactly. Right? That's, that's the biggest risk. I think most of the people stop once they fail once or twice the ones who continue further ahead without getting demotivated i think that those are the guys who get across the finish line exactly. and yeah you're right we started with what infrastructure as service i think everybody started with that yep exactly. now it's platform as a service and software as a service but we all started with vms exactly exactly so you how know, did you one, find your one... mentor if i may ask i'm sorry i said how did you find your mentor have you so, had someone from from the beginning or did you actually had to find someone in particular? So I've had a few. Um, and I've, I again, I've been really lucky <clears throat> to have good, good people kind of around me. Um, certainly our solutions architect, when, when he and I started working together, he was constantly checking in on me and I was sharing stuff that I'd figured out with him. And it kind of became a, a really great back and forth relationship. And, you know, oh, hey, my customer's doing this cool thing down in Chicago where they they solved this problem in a unique way. And it's, oh, that's really cool. I built something completely different and here's my code for it and something I solved. And so that that dialogue uh, with our solutions architect was, was fantastic. Um, internally, I was not a, a software engineer. I would never have considered myself any kind of a software developer. It was all just writing the occasional bash script here and there, right? Sure. Um, to automate little things. But our initial cloud team pulled in people from infrastructure and from our development organization. And so I was lucky to have really experienced senior developers working side by side with me. And so as I was teaching them all that I knew about infrastructure and how, you know, translating from physical to virtual, I could diagram an environment very easily to show them what it needed to look like. And then they could help me with the code and, and coach me in coding patterns and, and different different ways of making my code better and being a more efficient and effective developer. Nice. Um, so I was lucky to have those as well. And then um, the third place that I found a lot of great relationships to lean into was at user groups. User groups, uh, communities, we, essentially. Exactly. Um, AWS user groups meet all over the country. And those are fantastic way to meet other people building in AWS. Um, I got tapped to share some of my work at a HashiCorp user group. And uh, within about two months of, of sharing with that group, I was running the group and pulling people in from different cloud disciplines to share at that group, uh, talking about infrastructure's code and secrets management and all the, the things that HashiCorp was bringing to market. Um, and then just attending conferences. And, and asking questions at conferences, talking to people in the booths at conferences, talking to people in the sessions at conferences and saying, hey, you look like you had some really good questions that you didn't get to ask. What are you doing with this product? What are you doing with this platform? How are you using the new thing? Or what are you most excited about coming out of this keynote? And just asking people 
to to kind of share their enthusiasm a little bit. And you find people that they're kind of kindred spirits and, and you know, you swap LinkedIn profiles or Twitter accounts Twitter, or whatever. Yes. And, and next thing you know, you're, you know, on some other user group on the other end of the country, sharing ideas with, with people you wouldn't have otherwise met. Absolutely. So, now we do have AWS user groups here in the U S I think the yep. AWS user groups all across the globe as well <clears throat> that meet on regular basis. So I'm That's sure okay. that a lot of our, a lot of people who watch these videos a part of some kind of an AWS community, the user groups or our community builders. So we have different people watching these videos as well. Yep. Yeah, that's absolutely. Do you personally run any user group or a community or, or anything of that sort at a personal level? Um, so the HashiCorp user group that I was running mm -hmm. um, kind of slowed down and died out during the pandemic. Oh, that's um, it. And we tried reviving it a little bit, but there's just not a huge user population here sure. in Milwaukee. So it's a little harder to get that back up and off the ground. Um, but I've since made really good friends with the organizers of our local AWS user group. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't run it, but I help sponsor it, providing meeting spaces uh, in our office, uh, providing content and uh, giving talks at those user groups, um, you know, when I'm available to. Perfect. So, um, and then I've helped in and jumped in on some of the other user group meetings around the country. When they were all virtual, it was fantastic because I could I could hit three of them up in the same week and get three completely different experiences. Um, but there's one in Chicago that I I attend once in a while. There's one in uh, Indiana that I've attended a couple of times, and one in Boston that I like to to attend virtually as well. So absolutely. So, so. Dave, last question: What are those any other pearls of wisdom or the final words uh, uh, for F advice? or guidance to the audience who's watching this particular video? Oh my gosh. Um, it may seem intimidating, but if you get, um, if you can find a way to be comfortable experimenting and trying new things, yes, you can, the cloud is really not that scary and is, is something that, that, I mean, anybody can pick it up and learn. It Correct. is, it is, it's not magic. It's not, super top secret stuff you don't have to be a a guru from day one you can you can start slow and, and see value really quickly you're so. absolutely so precise i tell the i tell the same thing to a lot of people earlier you used to have your servers on prem now those servers and services are running on cloud you're still going to have applications you're still going to need developers you still need to test them it's just the same thing. It's just that it's not sitting in your own data center or somewhere where you can go and hit the stop and the start button. It's probably sitting in somebody else's data center. But at the end of the day, the issue and the problem still remains that you still have to have your apps up and running. Absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dave. Thank you for spending some time with us today. Absolutely. I really appreciate you, you coming over and, and sharing your experience with us. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Sure. Absolutely, Dave. Take care. Bye-bye. Take care.